Hey everybody, so Casey and I've got a great video for you today because we are comparing the first generation of the Honda Accord to the brand new 11th generation. And we've got a few other gens in between. You're not gonna wanna miss this one. Here's a very special opportunity to take a hands-on look at the first generation of the Honda Accord straight out of the Honda Heritage Collection. Big thank you to Honda for making this happen. But let's talk a little bit about this first gen Accord because it was such a significant model for the brand. So of course, Honda had the Civic in the mid 1970s. The Accord came along on May 7th, 1976 as a larger, more comfortable alternative to the Civic and boy what a hit this was practically right off the bat so what we're looking at here is a 78 or 79 accord and it's got a bunch of iconic honda design elements from the 1970s starting with the quad headlights a beautiful design with these pretty deep set bezels and then an egg crate style grill with cvcc badging there on the grill we'll talk about that here in a second now the bumpers it was the late 70s here in the u.s we have pretty strict crash regulation related to low speed incidents so you had to have these big diving board style front bumpers which a lot of people say look funny, but if you've ever seen older vehicle from the 70s get in an accident, these things do an incredible job of actually protecting the bodywork. Now some chrome trim around the front fascia, and I love this Honda badge with this little chrome piece that extends outward toward the back of the hood. Now as we come along the side here, First thing you'll notice, the 13 inch wheels. So nowadays the standards 19s, 20s, 21s, but 13s provide a huge amount of sidewall and a great ride quality. I wish designers would go back to making small wheels like this because in a pothole scenario, in the event that you run over something you're not supposed to, having such a large sidewall gives you a great ride and then little tiny disc brakes hiding there behind the steel wheels. The hood, fantastically designed hood. It hinges forward with hood louvers and some venting there along the front and a super thin A-pillar. So modern cars, a lot of thought given toward rollover protection, not so much back in the 1970s. Now along the side here, check out these rub strips. So these serve a couple of different purposes. If you opened your door into someone next to you, you probably wouldn't leave a nasty ding. And then same thing if someone were to open their door into you, you got a nice little bit of plastic here to, to protect your, uh, your sheet metal and then the hatchback design. So the car launched in 76 as a hatchback. The iconic sedan that we know the Accord for today came along in 77. And what that meant is that you got a huge amount of space. Now, put the key into this little slot, open it up, and there you can see just how much room you got. Very high lift over height, so today we're all, uh, you know, used to, you know, just simply lifting your bag over here. You really got to hoist your luggage into the back of this Accord. CVCC badging again in the rear that refers to the engine. You got Accord LX here in the back. The LX trim launched in 1978 and featured luxuries like power steering, air conditioning, and a clock. But that actually was on the option list. And then five-speed logo down here, which denotes, of course, the transmission. There was a two-speed automatic, which became available in the early 80s called the Honda-matic, but the five-speed is definitely the one you want. All right, let's take a look underneath the hood. Now, the engine in the Accord CVCC is a 1.6 liter four-cylinder engine that is horizontally opposed. Now, CVCC stands for Compound Vortex Controlled Combustion, but really it was a very high-tech combustion process back in the day that led to huge improvements in the fuel economy and efficiency. Now, the great thing about these engines is they're a really compact design. I was reading actually that the Accord was intended to be launched with a six-cylinder unit, but you can see all of the space that is left on the left and the right side of the engine and the transaxle setup, but you notice that the hood folds forward here. These engines came in a variety of different um, combustion options. You had fuel injection, you had carbureted versions, depending on where you were in the world. 72 horsepower, not a lot of power by modern standards, but a very efficient little engine back in the day. So of course, back in the late 70s, we saw a prevalence of catalytic converters, but because of the efficiency of the little CVCC, Honda was able to make this vehicle compliant without a catalytic converter, which is why you see non-catalyst. Now the downside of that is I imagine if you wanted to get this vehicle past emissions control today, explaining to the people it never had a cat beyond just that sticker might get a little sketchy. But one of the great things about these older Hondas is they were tailored for maintenance 
maintenance and self-preservation of the car so the owner could actually go ahead and look up information like what the idle speed was intended to be, what the valve lash was intended to be, and then do the work themselves. Stepping inside this first generation Honda Accord, uh, the first thing you notice is that the car feels very small and of course the basic platform is related to the Civic but just extended to make it a larger vehicle but certainly on the inside it's a very compact car. I mean we're talking interior that by modern standards would be like Mini Cooper size but back in the day this was a good sized car. But the big thing about Honda in the 1970s when compared to the, the domestic automakers was their attention to detail and their attention to quality and even what is this 44 years later 45 Five years later the inside of the car is held up beautifully and the quality on all of the controls feels incredible so the vents they feel really nice these little shut and open toggles feel really nice even the sliders for the heat and the AC controls all feel super super good now a couple of things worth noting in here first of all the quartz clock in the middle of the dashboard um, below that we do have some venting for the factory AC setup and then of course we have the uh, AM FM radio with cassette. I wonder if someone added that aftermarket or if that was standard. And then here, small ashtray and then the five speed manual transmission selector mount. Now, by modern standards, the throws are pretty long, but it still has that fantastic Honda feel of just being snickety in all the gear changes. It feels very precise, if not, you know, a little bit long. Uh, now, the early Accords had a two-speed semi-automatic transmission called Honda-matic, which was replaced in the early 80s by a more conventional three-speed automatic. Parking brake down here in the middle. There's no um, center console, per se, to rest your arm on. Uh, and then the steering wheel, surprisingly thick by 1970s standards, and it's got these four prongs which stick out and make it look like something straight out of Star Wars with horn buttons there. Hazard switch up top, but the gauges are my favorite part of this interior. So of course you do have a tachometer with the red line just under 6,000 RPM, fuel temp and water temp, but then you also have like early computer controlled systems. So you've got this little computer down here which will tell you when it's time to change your tires and your oil change and your oil filter all incorporated there in the gauge cluster. So a beautiful interior, very simple of course by modern standards, pretty small and a little bit antiquated but it has held up beautifully because of Honda's attention to detail. I think it's so funny that you know we all associate the Accord name with these large sedans but it actually launched as a three-door coupe or hatchback. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty small, pretty tiny back seat by modern day standards and actually not a lot of headroom, which is interesting. Lap belts, of course. And then uh, my favorite feature back here is on the back portion of these vinyl seats, you've got an ashtray. Look at that. So as Case puts it, your kids can smoke. So if you ever have the opportunity to drive one of these Hondas from the 1970s, you should definitely take it because you get a sense of the purposefulness in the engineering that Honda has incorporated into the way these cars were designed. So they're not frilly or fancy by any stretch of the imagination. They were designed to be as durable, long lasting and high quality as possible. Almost like driving a 1970s Mercedes, except maybe the metal's a little bit thinner. But even going on, this car from the late 70s, I mean, we're talking nearly 50 years the car feels incredibly tight. The steering feels good. The brakes feel good. The engine is responsive. This CVCC technology was so advanced back in the day and it still works on modern day roads and in modern day traffic. And these little cars are just lovely. Now they feel small. They feel really compact. Not as small as like the original Civic, but compared to anything modern, a very intimate experience in here. But I love the steering. The weight of this hydraulic power steering is perfect. The weight of the clutch pedal, the way the brakes work, all feel just fantastic. Let's see how the acceleration is. Oh. <laughs> You know what's interesting is if you've ever driven like a CVCC Civic, especially the early ones, they're pretty slow, but this car really doesn't feel that slow. 72 horsepower. <laughs> Actually accelerates pretty well. That's 30 miles an hour already. Um, compared to a lot of the other efficient cars of the 1970s, if you look at like the Vega and the Pinto, which were these big, heavy, poorly engineered behemoths just lumbering around, uh, this car is pretty small and sprightly and fun to drive. And this is a generation of Japanese vehicle that really killed off 
uh, a lot of the American market share. What I find to be super odd about this car is that this is a really small car by modern day standards, and yet this was a family car. You know, this was a fairly capable, well-sized car for a family back in the day. It was designed to throw a bunch of kids in the back. I mean, this was an Accord. An Accord back then is similar to an Accord today. It was just a way to get your family to and from places. And yet you could never have a two-door hatchback today and have it be considered a family car. But by Japanese standards, especially in the 70s, it was. And now for the 2023 Honda Accord, a full 10 generations later, this car is the 11th generation of the Accord nameplate, been in continuous production since 1976. Pretty crazy to think about. Now the old one launched as a hatchback, the new one only available in four-door sedan configuration, and from a design standpoint, almost nothing that connects the two apart from the H on the front end, but this old H it's probably an inch tall, and this new one has grown probably close to four inches due to some of the technology in this car, but the old one ran with four halogen headlights. The new one has gone full LED. The old one had this big chunky front bumper sticking off the front. The new one nicely incorporated in the front for aerodynamics and of course uh, pedestrian safety, crash safety. It's all evolved in um, the years compared to the first gen. Now the new one is rolling on 19 inch wheels. This is a touring model with this two tone design, a bright silver and then this dark black. Of course a much thinner sidewall when compared to that old version. And then of course along the side this nice crisp line that ties the front and the rear of the vehicle together. We still, just like the old one, have some chrome along the belt line, but unlike the old one, we now have two standard mirrors. So one for the driver's side and the passenger side and a sunroof on this touring model. And then as we make our way to the back, you still have a nice sloping roof line, which gives it kind of a sporty look, but the old one was available in a hatchback. This new one is of course sedan only. And then I love the tail lights with these streaks, uh, much more modern lighting design, much more effective at night, uh, but a much different look. That old Accord out of a 1.6 liter made 72 horsepower. The new Accord out of a 1.5 liter makes 192 horsepower. That's pretty crazy. Now, this model has the two liter hybrid system under the hood. So the old one was front wheel drive, the new one is front wheel drive. Now this model, the hybrid, makes 204 horsepower through a two liter Atkinson cycle engine and of course the hybrid uh, powertrain with an eCVT. So we're talking nearly three times the power of the old one. So obviously the Accord has grown quite a bit. This car is something like 30 inches longer three zero inches longer than the old model. And when you step inside, you definitely feel it. It's a lot wider, it feels a lot more roomy, um, but you still retain that quality feeling that the Accord has always been known for, but now with a ton more tech. So a lot of stuff has gone digital in this car. You've got a digital instrument cluster and a digital screen, a full 12.3 inch screen. But what I like about Honda is that they still give you some analog features. So for example, we still have a volume knob, albeit the smallest volume knob I have ever seen. We still have, you know, controls here for the vents, which is no longer a set thing in 2023. Some of these have gone digital as well. We still have a hard button for the climate control, the heated seats, the ventilated seats, which is really nice. And of course we have that automatic transmission selector, uh, no more five-speed manual, but a very high quality interior. In this new 11th generation of the Accord, lots of contrasting stitching in this model, lots of interesting design elements. Uh, of course we have these leather seats on this touring trim. So it feels very premium in here. While that old CVCC was very well made, no one would mistake it for a Lincoln or a Cadillac or something like this. But on this new model, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be off base if you thought this was at least an Acura or an Infiniti, maybe even to Lexus territory. It's really that nice in here. So of course you could get a four door in that first gen and there are some benefits of four doors, primarily being there are rear doors. I just over explained how a four door works, but the back seat of this new Accord is a lot more roomy and a lot more comfortable than the old one. It seats five, you also have shoulder belts, so in the event of a collision, you're gonna be much safer and rear headrest. So obviously, even those basic safety things we take um, as uh, granted today was not always the case back in the 1970s. Now, um, you do have two USB-C ports back here and heated seats and air vents and a map pocket and cup holders. All things you didn't have in the back seat of the old one, but you don't have an ashtray. 
So I kind of want to focus on some other greatest hits of the Accord over the years to show the progression. So we've gone from first to the third generation with this car. Um, 1986, the car debuted in 85, and they were built through 89. And this is probably one of my favorite generations of Accord, manufactured in Marysville, Ohio. Accord has actually been manufactured there since 1982. But this is the 80s Accord, and I just love some of the cooler details on this car. Starting with, of course, the pop-up headlights, which hide themselves away so nicely into the front end. And then when you twist the light switch, they pop open. And even going on 40 years later, they still work as intended. But very cool color, kind of this nice champagne gold. Very neat. Wheels have gotten uh, no larger, actually. 13 inch wheels still, but now with a wheel cover. Aerodynamics really started to come into play in the 1980s but uh, fantastically squared off. This is why I like this generation. Everything is very square and chunky and very cool. Four-door sedan in this case. I love the rear window defroster. And then coming along the back here, just very angular. Everything's chunky on this Accord and it's aged quite nicely. And wait till you see the inside. Now as we make our way on the inside, the first thing you are greeted by is velour. Look at all the velour, it's everywhere. This kind of speckled material across the seats and it makes a comeback there in the door panels as well. And then the dashboard is brown because of course it's gotta be brown. Lots of similarities between this um, third gen interior and the first. Once again, kind of like the clock located there in the middle, this molded dashboard. I love the lines of buttons here. They kind of pop in and out like you're playing a game of whack-a-mole. You still have these iconic sliders cassette player down there and then of course the automatic transmission in this car. I believe this was a four-speed automatic electronic antenna down here and listen to the door chime. Coming to a disc discography near you. Now 120 horsepower out of this four-cylinder. No airbag in this car. We didn't quite see those in the mid-1980s. Very simple gauges with your tack, your speedometer, heat, temperature, that kind of thing. Um, and 166,000 miles on this example. You would never guess by the condition. And if you think there's a lot of miles, wait till we see the car next to us. So this third gen example, 166,000 miles, you know, fairly high mileage, but for a Honda, not that many. And that's demonstrated by this fourth generation with over 1 million miles, 1 million 3,440 miles to be exact, owned by a gentleman named Joe who worked for Honda, a service technician. Um, Honda actually gave him a new car for this accomplishment. And then of course they took his car and they used it for publicity. But they built these fourth gens from 1989 through 1993. And it used a very revolutionary engine, an all aluminum 2.2 liter four cylinder with 16 valves, which was a huge improvement over the third generation car. But we also saw big evolvements in styling and design. So the pop-ups are gone, replaced by fixed headlight units. Um, they use these special optics in these units, by the way, so they could be the, one of the first cars sold here in the US with a fully clear headlight design. Now this car has been repainted, but some of the stats in this car are crazy, like 185 oil changes, nine timing belts, I think 72 sets of tires. But the fact that this car is still here several decades later, still looking good, is very cool. Let's check out the inside. Now for a car with a million miles on it, the interior has held up really well. Check out that dashboard. No cracks or major tears or major imperfections in it whatsoever. The steering wheel definitely showing quite a bit of wear around the rim, but once again, still more or less intact, if not be it a little bit squidgy. The seats, they're dirty, but they're not completely collapsed either. It's amazing how well these Accords were manufactured. Now, um, crazy thing is this car is still on its original engine, still on its original transmission, and the fuel pump went out at 741,000 miles, and that's the only time he's ever had the, car, had the car towed. So it's just a testament to the build quality in these Accords. This generation, not my favorite, you know, from a collector standpoint. It's a little bit plain Jane, but clearly they just go forever. So this car has a million miles on it. This car has just 67. So this is basically a brand new Honda Accord from 1994 that Honda never sold, never registered. It was just used for display for media purposes. And as such, it has 67 miles on the clock. Now this 
fifth generation of Accord, debuted in the mid 1990s, sold through 1997, and this is in my opinion when they really got a lot of style to them. So the front end is very swept back. A lot of Acura design cues in here. The headlights, um, early example of a headlight that was completely clear with these unique optic side markers here in them, uh, but a very flush front bumper. And then of course you get these cars in a number of configurations. This one is the two-door coupe. Now the interesting thing about the fifth gen is, is it was the first time in the Honda lineup where the USA and Japanese markets really differed from the European market. So the European version of this car completely different from the US model, but you got to check out the inside because with just 67 miles on it, it's beautiful. So the inside of this car is beautiful in a very retro Honda sort of way. So not fancy by any stretch of the imagination, but super high quality. And with just 67 miles on the clock, all the buttons feel completely perfect, which I think is just so cool. But look at the design, right? Very simple, but very purposeful. Everything comes to hand beautifully. Everything can be reached all within a fingertips view. It's just a great interior and these seats are so comfortable. So a cloth design, but very basic in their bolstering and very effective. And of course, two door coupe for this model, not a ton of room in the back, but uh, four door sedans were very popular in this generation. So there was this Accord for everyone in the fifth generation. Now there were some really great cars in between the 90s and of course the mid 2010s. Um, I mean, my favorite generation, the seventh, the eighth generation, super iconic, but for the purpose of keeping this video pretty concise and focusing on the first and the 11th gen, I just want to talk quickly about the 10th generation, which really has spurred a lot of evolvement and has really driven us to where we are today. Um, this car, of course, brought in a lot of turbocharging, the fantastic two liter turbo into this model, really made a big push toward Honda and their performance driving in the Accord. But uh, enough talking about some of these older models. Let's see what the new one drives like. All right, so behind the wheel of the new 2023 Honda Accord. And I wanted to spend a little bit of time in this car before I gave my, uh, my review. So we've actually borrowed one out here in Colorado from Honda. And after spending several hundred miles behind the wheel, I think, I think I've got some pretty uh, good understandings of how this car performs and what it's good at and what it's not so good at, especially compared to the first generation. Now, the first thing you notice is the size difference. Getting behind the wheel, it just feels so much larger and so much heavier, and that certainly is a good and a bad thing. It's a good thing in terms of solidity on the highway, and Honda does a really good job of hiding this vehicle's weight through some suspension fanciness, and of course, modern day steering and brakes. It's a bad thing though, because it doesn't feel nearly as nimble or as sprite as the old car, but it is so much more comfortable and refined, so whereas the old one had really thin sheet metal that rusted out quickly this new one is so quiet on the inside it does such a nice job of keeping the outside out and the inside in the seats are fantastic the uh, the quality of materials in here are actually still very very good I know we talked about the quality of the old one this new one also feels really nice from a material standpoint and the ride quality is so much better um, even though this car is heavier it's got much wider tires and you know it's gonna handle a lot better in a, in a nice set of turns now of course this car has gone to hybrid technology in the upper end trim. So we've got a four cylinder gasoline engine made into a hybrid system with 204 horsepower and it's a lot faster than the old one. I wish you could get a manual transmission. This one of course is uh, eCVT only, but even still it feels pretty spirited. You know, the, the 10th gen, you had that fantastic two liter turbo with 252 horsepower. This car 204, not quite as quick, but it still offers plenty of fun. But I think the big deal here is that Honda has stuck true to the Accord DNA. These are still relatively affordable cars. We're talking well under 40 grand for a nicely equipped Accord that's uh, now feeling a lot more premium than it ever has, drives more premium than it ever has, and should still be reliable in the long term. And it'll all your family and all your friends in comfort and serenity. So Honda has evolved the Accord, but they haven't forgotten where they've come from. Both cars are still, at the end of the day, reliable, relatively attainable people movers with a little bit of fun and a little bit of flair. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Has Honda done a good job of sticking true to the Accord name? This has been Tommy, ending it off with a full throttle acceleration in the new Accord. Ah, oh, yeah. Not bad. We'll see you in another episode. Check out alttfl.com for the latest and greatest in new and used car reviews.